I guess first thing I want to do is uh, thank everyone who has subscribed. Our channel is growing, and I say it's our channel because it's as much yours as it is mine. Um, and I appreciate everyone who comments and comments on every video. It's very kind of you. Um, I am starting to have a bit of an issue responding to each and every comment. I think that is becoming uh, apparent. Uh, I hope uh, that you continue to respond. Uh, I just want to let you know that I do read each and every comment. And uh, there are some that uh, I feel I have to respond to, and I will, but it's getting, as I say, it's getting rather difficult to respond to every one of them. So I hope you bear with me on that and perhaps help each other out if you have an answer to somebody's query. Um, that would be very nice if you could respond to an individual who perhaps needs some greater assistance. You know, I don't always have the answers. Sometimes you have better answers than I do, or, or at least equal. So I appreciate any input from um, from all of you. Okay, today <laughs> a lot of crazy things going on in this world. Um, to touch on a few, what's going on in Russia and Ukraine, well, I'll let somebody else delve into that one and stay away from that one for the time being. <sighs> Definitely midterm elections coming up in the U.S. and that's creating a lot of interest and uh, yeah, a lot of crazy things going on. There was two that I did want to touch on <laughs> specifically and I don't know why those two but those two come to mind and one of them is the <clears throat> teacher in Canada who sported huge boobs in the classroom. Uh, it's a male teacher and I have no idea why he would do that and why the school board would <clears throat> protect him um, wearing these false humongous um, boobs. Uh, to me that uh, mocks women to say the least. Um, I don't know what his proposed message was, but if he's teaching teenagers, I mean, they're going to just sit there and giggle at this whole thing, um, or find it, who knows how they find it, but obviously they are going to giggle behind his back. And unfortunately, the fact that he is supported in those efforts by the school board is, if my child were in that classroom, I would pull that child immediately. I don't think that there's any need for... Um, that kind of showmanship. I don't know what he's trying to prove. Like, it is absolutely ridiculous. And as I say, to me, it just mocks women. It makes fun of them. It has no other purpose but to ridicule a woman's body. And I, and I think we're all a little bit tired of that. So, uh, yes, there are some women with very large breasts. There are some women with very small breasts. And... Uh, same goes for males' anatomies, so uh, I don't think that women should be picked on quite as much as what they are, but it seems to be the case. Women can't. Anyway, no need to delve any further into that one. <clears throat> now, the next big issue that I wanted to discuss was actually probably much more important than that one. That one is just a clown acting out, as far as I'm concerned. But the I guess the major area of concern was a speech that I heard from the leader of the UN Assembly. <laughs> and I'm going to read some of his words, just a few sentences. Uh, he said, we need hope and we need more action to ease the global food crisis. We now must urgently address the global fertilizer market crunch. Who would have guessed? 
This year the world has enough food. Yeah, this is what we've all been saying. But the problem is distribution. But if the fertilizer market is not stabilized, next year's problem might be the food supply itself. Yes, and farmers think, have been saying that all along, that we're okay for this year, but we're going to feel the crunch next year. And he goes on to say, you already have reports of farmers in West Africa and beyond cultivating fewer crops because of the price or lack of fertilizers. I don't think it's just the price or lack of availability of fertilizers. I think that they are, they have been banned in certain countries. Uh, Sri Lanka being one of them. It was banned there and uh, that caused the uh, food production to be drastically reduced until there was literally a collapse of the country. And uh, although that was not the only factor, it was still a major contributing factor. They have lack of yeah. food, food and fuel. So, um, <laughs> They're going out to other countries to buy their food and food and fuel. Now, countries that used to produce their own food and perhaps even some of their own fuel are going outside to other countries to buy. But if nobody is producing, who are they going to buy from? I don't understand that concept. Yeah, they say you can buy outside and you don't have to produce yourself. But with nobody producing, who are you going to buy it from? Okay, he goes on to say, it is essential to continue removing all remaining obstacles to the export of Russian fertilizers and their ingredients, including ammonia. These products are not subject to, sh to sanctions. Who would have guessed? Another major concern is the impact of high gas prices <laughs> on the production of nitrogen fertilizers, and these must also be addressed seriously. Without action now, the global fertilizer shortage will quickly morph into a global food shortage. Well, I think Sri Lanka has proved that we didn't need this message from the leader of the General Assembly, the UN General Assembly, to tell us what the issues are. We've seen it happen in real life. Back in June sometime, I published a video titled Warning from a Farmer, and that was actually um, a verbatim from a post uh, from a farmer in Alberta who uh, detailed for me what the issues these farmers were facing and I was so impressed with her um, skills at, at addressing it all and laying it out very clearly that I asked her if I could publish it and I did and it, that video did very well not only did that video do very well but there were other warnings from other farmers shortly after throughout the US and Canada so there were a number of other um, YouTube videos on the same theme. And um, to date, we have not addressed the uh, fertilizer shortage in Canada or the fertilizer uh, emissions controls that they're trying to impose in Canada. So the warning from a farmer still exists. Um, the reality that Sri Lanka has faced faces us all. And I think that it is time for um, not only the UN to address this situation, but each and every country to sit down and be responsible stewards of their food and fuel supplies. Um, look after their country and their people's interests and not simply follow the lead of someone trying to address a certain issue without understanding the full implications of how it'll affect the world. What is the point of saving the world if there is nobody left to enjoy it? <laughs> I mean, do we want to kill off everybody on the planet? Is that the intent? If it is, 
I'm not for that plan. Okay, I do recognize that perhaps, you know, there are things that can be done. Uh, I think that all players have to come to the table and come up with a plan together. I don't think it's something that can be imposed from above and say, you must, you must do this. But all players that are affected should uh, be at the table and should have a say. And uh, perhaps something realistic should happen. The Dutch farmers, how long have they been protesting? I think it's been years. I don't think it's just recent. They have, I believe, since uh, 2019, um, is my understanding. And uh, so they've been fighting this long and hard. And uh, I think that they deserve a seat at the table, uh, as well as other farmers. I think that uh, agriculture is important to everybody. And um, it's about time everyone realized that farmers need to be supported. And uh, if it weren't for them, none of us would be here today. So cannot forget the Dutch farmers. Uh, food prices have already gone through the roof and this fertilizer issue has not been addressed. Fuel prices have gone through the roof and uh, there's plenty of fuel to go around. It's just a lack of will to produce it in our own countries. So all these things have to be addressed and they will be. We'll either have more Sri Lankas or People will smarten up, and for some odd reason, the UN bringing it to everyone's attention, who knows if that'll have any effect, but it seems as though there are those that are considering the reality of the problems that they themselves have imposed, you know, let's face it. We wouldn't be in this situation if it wasn't for them demanding certain things in the first place. So, green energy is not possible today. It could not um, drive industrialized markets. And um, there's no reason why it can't be a part of the energy, but it isn't the whole, and it never will be. And I think I addressed in another video that <laughs> electric vehicles don't do well in cold climates, so uh, until that's improved, I don't see electric vehicles doing very well in Canada, unless of course you're just talking in a major city where you're going from one major intersection to another, maybe across town or something. But <clears throat> Canada is mostly a cold climate. It is not a you know, you, you do have some some very nice warm spots in the southern part of the country, but that's not the majority of the country. So some things have to be really thought out a little bit better than what they have been. So anyway, enough. The fact that the UN is addressing this issue uh, is of value, unfortunately. They are likely the ones that created the problem in the first place, so let's see them actually do something to fix it. And anyway, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. I hope you continue to keep watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye for now.